Today's video has been made possible by World of Tanks. If you enjoy online team-based shooters, or you just like to see my strategic genius when it comes to driving tanks, then stick around until the end of the video. When we think of angels, the images conjured are often quite similar. Radiant, winged figures with many human traits. We see this imagery in modern depictions as well as in classical art, so one would assume this is how they are described in biblical and ancient texts, but this is far from the truth. Angels take more of a spiritual form as opposed to a physical one, there is no real description of what an angel's true form is, but there are some descriptions of the bodies they assume. And be warned, they are very strange. So let's take a look at some of the different types of angels. In the 12th century, scholars divided all of the angels around God into categories based on a hierarchical system. In Christianity, this is sometimes referred to as the Three Spheres and the Nine Orders of Angels, because it describes a three-tier system with three types of angels in each tier. Near the bottom of this hierarchy are the Cherubim. The Book of Ezekiel describes them as having four faces, each one representing something different. The Lion represented wild animals the ox domesticated animals, the eagle birds, and the human represented humanity. The cherubim had long straight legs with hooves and two pairs of wings. You may also see them with regular feet and four pairs of wings. A much different appearance to the young plump cherubs we would associate with figures such as Cupid, that stem from Christian scholars such as Thomas Aquinas, who characterize them as having a burning love for God. The Hebrew Bible mentions the word cherubim almost 100 times, but their purpose is still fairly ambiguous. The general belief is that they exist to guard the Garden of Eden, especially the Tree of Life. The cherubim having numerous faces has this almost chimera feel, but the human face is more akin to a sphinx. Either way, there is something very unsettling about their appearance. The seraphim are a type of angel that appear in Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, but their importance varies. In Judaism, they are middle of the road, but in Christianity, they assume the highest rank possible just under God. The Book of Isaiah describes them as having six wings. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another, and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. From this passage, we gather that two of these six wings were used to cover their faces, two to cover their feet, and the last two were used to fly. The second passage describes them almost as cheerleaders, who fly around the throne of God spreading his word. This description is not as detailed as the cherubim, so all we know for sure is that the seraphim were made up of mostly wings. The Book of Revelation only differs slightly, describing their six wings as being full of eyes. In Islam, we see the term seraph, which is used to describe archangels who were born from celestial fire. 
Next, we have the Thrones or the Ophanim. These are about as far from a traditional looking angel as one can get. In Christianity, the Ophanim were the entities that acted as chariots or transportation for the cherubim. They were giant interlocking wheels with wings and eyes that would reside in the part of the cosmos where material form began to shape. Like the Seraphim, they would also chant God's glory whenever in his presence. The Book of Enoch describes them as the many-eyed ones, and places them in the same category of celestial being as the Cherubim and Seraphim. Their role here was much more than transportation. The Ophanim never sleep, and forever guard the throne of God. When Ezekiel has his vision of the Great Chariot, he describes all three of these angels as the Guardians. But given the strange nature of what he's describing, some believe this was a hallucination. Others take Ezekiel's account as an encounter with UFOs. So no one really knows where they came from and why they look so strange. The Virtues are a group of angels who do not possess a physical body, but have control over the elements. They were referred to as the Shining Ones, because they appear as sparks of light. The main role of the Virtues was to perform miracles for those who were deemed as deserving. They would receive orders from the angels above them and travel to Earth to perform these miracles. Once on Earth, they would assume a human form. There are several types of angels along with the Virtues whose primary form resembles a source of light. Angels are celestial beings. They are neither male nor female, and essentially they can take whatever form they desire. Is it a surprise that the angels who spend all of their time in the cosmos with God are the strangest and most unorthodox looking? No, not really. If you're talking about regions that are supposed to be outside of our comprehension, then surely the beings that inhabit them would also look out of place. Even if that means they resemble something you'd expect to see in a Lovecraftian horror, or perhaps the writings of someone coming down off an acid trip. It also makes sense for the Archangels and regular Angels to appear in a more human light, as they have the most human interaction. The further back you delve into various religious texts, the stranger angels appear to be. As later books were added and revised, the more human-looking angels became the norm, and maybe this was done to make things easier to understand. In reality, we may never know, but it's still interesting to examine. As mentioned earlier, today's video has been sponsored by World of Tanks, a free-to-play online multiplayer team shooter where everyone has their own tank. There's no need to worry though, you don't need to be an expert in tank warfare to enjoy the game. Take me for example, I know nothing about tanks, but the game is fast-paced and simple enough that everyone can enjoy themselves. You can place yourself strategically on the battlefield and outsmart the enemy team. Or like me, you can just charge in all guns blazing and most likely be the first one to die every game when the enemy team just turns around and blows you to pieces. During my time playing, I've tried a range of different tanks, and although it is very fun playing as the light tanks that can skirt around the edge of the map undetected, the firepower of a medium tank like the T-34 is just unrivaled. There is a large array of historically accurate tanks that you can choose from and customise to your own taste. Whether you're with friends or by yourself, World of Tanks is full of fast and highly explosive fun. You can use the link in the description to sign up and play today. New players can also use the code TANKMANIA to receive 250,000 credits, 7 days of premium access, and three rental tanks for free. So if you're looking for something to do in your spare time, then why not try World of Tanks today? As always, I've been your host, Mythology and Fiction Explained.